The crystal jellyfish, also known as Acora Victoria, resides in the eastern waters of the Pacific Ocean. Like the majority of other individual macroplatonic organisms, this hydromedusin is able to emit light through a series of chemical reactions in a process known as bioluminescence. But how do these secrets bioluminous? What is the process? Well, the fluorescent green light seen on the jellyfish is generated by both a corian, a blue emitting photoprotein, and its adjacent green fluorescent photoprotein, which are found along the margin of its umbrella. Situated within photoproteins are small rod-like microcrystals that contain both luciferin molecules and luciferase enzymes. Luciferin refers to any small organic, typically heterolytic substrate that emits light upon oxidation in suitable organic media. Whilst the majority of bioluminescent systems have a dissociable luciferin luciferase complex that requires oxygen for the action to commence, calcium activated photoproteins such as aquarium are a fascinating class of bioluminescent proteins, as they do not require the presence of molecular oxygen nor possess a readily dissociable luciferin, thus implying that oxygen is somehow prepackaged within the protein and that luciferin like substrate is incorporated or firmly bound to the photoprotein. In light of this, different bioluminescent animals use varying types of luciferin, but the crystal jellyfish uses coenlin terazine. But undergoing a series of chemical reactions that involve its corresponding luciferase enzyme and other necessary molecules, this pathway produces an excited form of luciferin, referred to as oxyluciferin, that emits visible photons upon its descent back to ground state. Now let us take a step forward and derive this biochemical pathway to unveil what is occurring within the photoproteins in the crystal jellyfish. The first step in the bioluminescence pathway for Acroia victoria is colonterazine distorting into its corresponding carbanion. The ichoran protein alters the ground state of colonterazine and subsequently leads to the creation of a reactive carbanion. The second step results in addition of a protein-bound molecular oxygen to the carbanion producing hydroperoxide. The synthesis of hydroperoxide allows the molecule to carry its own oxidizing agent, which enables it to stabilize by a hydrogen bonding of the peroxide to phenolic oxygen. Step 3 depicts the formation of dioxetone. Upon Ca2 plus iron binding to the acorin, the protein complex undergoes a conformational change due to the breaking of a hydrogen bond between colonterazine and acorin. This facilitates binding by the hydroperoxide anion on the reactive carbonyl, which is seen by the reformation of a covalent bond adjacent to the ketone, consequently leading to the transient formation of an unstable dioxetone. The fourth step is the elimination of CO2 and the synthesis of an excitant anilate anion. To stabilise dioxetone, CO2 is released to form the excited solenteramide anilate anion, also known as oxyluciferin. The fifth is the transition of solenteramide to solenterazine, as the excited anilate anion decays and returns back to its ground state. The oxyluciferin anion yields a discharge echoron complex as well as the emission of a 470 nanometer photon, thus producing blue light. The green emission of light, however, is produced by the activation of both the echoron protein and the green fluorescent protein, GFP. When the echoron is excited in the final step, it releases energy in the form of blue light. This energy is transferred to the surrounding green fluorescent protein, which will also become excited. When the green fluorescent protein returns to its ground state, it causes a release of green light. This transfer of energy and light is due to a phenomenon called bioluminescence resonance energy transfer. The function of the bioluminescent display in Aquaria Victoria is still largely unknown. However, it has suggested that the phenomenon presents for adaptive value through acting as a defence mechanism to distract or startle its predators. This suggestion comes as both the physical and chemical adaptation of the Aquaria Victoria is comparable to other aquatic species which also possesses bioluminescent properties. It is estimated that over 50% of jellyfish species have bioluminescent properties with the greatest diversity occurring in deep sea environments where there is minimal light.
While we may not know the exact reason for Aquaria Victoria having bioluminescent properties, they have, however, played a significant role in medical research fields and have allowed for further understanding in progressive treatments. The use of the green fluorescent protein has proved to be a valuable reporter or marker protein. This is because it can be attached to genes to provide identification and measurement and allow cellular functions to be investigated at greater depths. It is used to follow processes and study the interaction and expression with other chemicals or genes in the body. Using DNA recombinant technology, scientists combine the green fluorescent protein to another gene that produces a specific protein in which they want to analyse. They insert the complex into a cell and this allows for further research into a particular cell, tissue or organ. Studies with the green fluorescent protein have proved useful in many fields such as embryo growth research, HIV studies, neuron identification and much more. One example of this is that the green fluorescent protein has allowed neurologists to see a singular neuron, a previously impossible task. This has allowed for the improvement in understanding the function and behaviour of how diseases work. Due to this breakthrough, new treatment strategies are being formed. This amazing jellyfish is not only making waves in the ocean, but also here on land.